To be or not to be, bees continue to contribute to more food cultivation than we realize all across the world. And today is World Bee Day. We should always be, always be, right? So today UNF is hosting a, a special workshop to highlight bees' importance. And news for Jack's reporter and anchor, Ashley Harding, joins us live there now. You know, Ashley, learning a lot from you hanging out with those bees. And the woman you're talking to, Rhonda, that's my neighbor, actually. So tell her I said hello. Yes, I certainly will. Hey, Rhonda, I don't know if you can hear me, but Melanie says hello. Hi, Melanie. <laughs> You probably couldn't hear her, but she says, hello, good morning. So cool. So to be or not to be, I really like the way we started that, guys. But yes, it really is all about addressing the bee shortage because they, you know, they may buzz, buzz, but they really are our friends. So joining me here now is someone different. This is Kevin Anderson. He is the coordinator for Ogier Gardens, where they're having that workshop. So again, tell us about the bee shortage, how much they do for us beyond making honey and all that good stuff. Well, thank you. Um, every like one third of the food we eat actually is pollinated by a honeybee and other wild bees are critically important for the pollination for our food supply. So having these pollinators um, out um, helping to pollinate is really important for all of that we put on our dinner plate every night. So well said. So right behind you, we have something that's going to be made here with the workshop. If you could have pulled up one of these, these are the bee, little bee hotels. Tell us what they do because we know that the people who come out here are going to be making their own. So tell us what they do and how they help. So in Florida, we have 315 species of native bees, and some types of bees are called mason bees, and they're a solitary type of bee that doesn't live in a big social nest, so they just make little homes in these little tiny uh, pieces of wood and bamboo and other kind of structures. There's a lot of options and ways to make them, so we're going to showcase a few of them today at our workshop. Very good. So one thing I do want to mention, I got an excellent email from one of our viewers. This is Karen. This is a really good question. So I'm going to have Kevin address this now. I'm going to read your email real quick. You wrote to me saying, I currently have nine mason bee pollinating houses and enjoy the activity every day. Problem I'm contacting you about is when shopping for fire ant dust, that is something we have to think about. I read labels for many products that not only kill fire ants, but numerous other critters, including bees and wasps. Is there an alternative to address that problem, but also still protect the bees? So unfortunately, that's a problem we're very familiar with here in the Osier Gardens as well, because we are an organically managed garden. So our first line of attack against the fire ants is actually to use uh, boiling water, which is free and abundant, or more, more, more or less. And then secondly, we'll use something called Orange Guard, or it's an orange oil. It's a byproduct of the citrus industry um, that just um, attacks them right on the hive and doesn't hurt plants. And then the last thing we can do is a bait trap that's called spinosid, which is from a bacterium, and it really is a, a bait that specifically targets the fire ants. So those are really effective. Very good question right there. So Ashling, if you'll come over here and just show off everything right here before we go. Now the event is here at Ogier Gardens. It starts at 10 o'clock. It starts at 10 o'clock, of course, and goes till 1230. It is a free workshop right here at UNF.